Now we begin with a project evaluation techniques and we begin with the first method that is net present value. So let us understand what is the concept of net present value first of all before we jump into the depth of you know, all the jingles and understanding evaluation of the results and so on. So the net present value is the present value of the project's expected future cash flow minus the project's initial cash outflow. So you can say that the net present value is the result final result of the project's future expected cash flow minus its initial cash outflow. Now projects or you can say the present value of the expected future cash flow. This is calculated by using the discount rate that is the company's required rate of return. So if you remember from the concept of present value how we had used the discount rate to determine the present value of the money which is supposed to be received in future. That's exactly the same concept which is going to apply over here. That's why it's important for you to understand what is the concept of present value of money. Okay, coming back to the present uh, net present value, the present value of the expected future cash flow, the one which we're going to interpret, which are going to come in the future, is discounted using the company's required rate of return. So every company has their own benchmark, right? Before evaluating any project, obviously there is always a risk-free investment option available for any entity, any person. But because businesses are uncertain and take a risk, they expect the projects to reward them with a higher rate of return, so higher higher income. So every company has defined their own required rate of return, which is based on multiple factors which they take into account and arrive at a final completed figure. Over here, we need to understand that this required rate of return is going to serve as a discount rate for you. That is, the company is going to evaluate the future value or present value of money using their own required rate of return as a discount rate when you compute the net present value. Now, this required rate of return is either the return the organization could expect to receive in the market from an investment of a comparable risk. Let's say your project has a 50-50 chances of failure and a success. And also there is an alternative in the market which has a similar 50-50 chance of pass or failure of success or unsuccessful. If that project is giving the rate or required rate of return or you can say that project is generating an income of 15% then obviously you can use that same benchmark to determine the uh, discount rate for your project. Or else, that can be the minimum rate of return that the project must earn in order to justify investment of the resources. Many times it happens that the companies themselves have developed an internal required rate of return and they have this thing that if you want your project to be qualified, if you want the company to fund your project, you need to prove them that your project is generating at least required rate of return expected by the company. So, as a project manager, you really don't need to go into the depth of this entire stuff. You can have this numbers required rate of returns, everything from the financial teams, but it's good to know how these numbers are arrived at. So you can tweak your projects accordingly to reach that level. You can justify your projects accordingly to reach to that level and get the funding from the company. Now, the required rate of return is also called as a discount rate, hurdle rate, opportunity cost of capital and such other names. Generally, company's cost of capital is used as a discount rate. Now, the company's cost of capital is entirely a big topic in itself, okay? But uh, to give you a glimpse of that, what happens is that companies raise their funding by various sources. They can be loans, bonds, debt, share capital, preference capital, and such a thing. And every capital raised, every uh, financing arrangement has their own required, or you can say has their own payout things. For example, bonds have a fixed interest payment year on year and upon maturity. Debt has a similarly a fixed interest rate. So these are the required cost of capital the company needs to pay. Equity shareholders of the company, depending on the risk appetite or this risk level of the company, have either a higher expected return or a lower expected return. Preference shareholders have a preference share dividend expected returns. And sometimes if it's going to be converted to equity and all, there's a different game. But when all this interest factors are taken into account the company arrives at one single cost of capital that is a weighted average cost of capital which is proportion the weights are depending on the amount of funding raised from various sources and that final figure is known as the cost of capital for the company now again this is entirely a topic of records you really don't need to understand this in depth you will be given your cost of capital or the discount rate and just need to use those amount into your computation to arrive at the final net present value but as i said a Bit more knowledge is not harmful and it goes a long way to help you to understand and stand out as a project manager. Okay, so coming back to the question in hand. Now, I believe you understood what is the concept of net present value theoretically. We're going to solve this some practically also, but theoretically, I hope your concepts are clear. 
Now, how do you evaluate the net present value when you have the results in front of you? How do you evaluate that? So when a project has a positive net present value, that is all the present value of the future cash inflows minus the outflow cash outflow generating still generates a positive number. That means the project will be profitable because it will earn more than it will cost the company. So it will increase the wealth of the shareholders ultimately and the company should accept the project. If the project has a negative present value, that is their present value of the cash inflow is less than the total of the cash outflows. It is the un it is an unprofitable project for the company because this will cost the company more than it will earn for the company. Hence, it's better to reject it. And lastly, if the project has a zero net present value, that is here the project is neither profitable nor in a loss state. If you're going to invest supposedly say a hundred thousand dollars in the project, the present value of all the cash inflows which is going to generate is exactly a hundred thousand dollars only. And this is not the acceptance of this project or the rejection of this project is neither going to impact the shareholders wealth in any case. It will neither increase the shareholders wealth nor the profit of the company, neither it will decrease the profit of the company or the shareholders wealth ultimate. So in a way the company is indifferent financially saying from the financial standpoint if the company accepts the project with a zero present value. So this was all with regard to the concept of present value. Now we're going to look at an example which we're going to create and solve together. So that will give us a better understanding of the net present value. So let's go to our Excel sheet and start preparing the example. Okay, so let us say ABC company decide needs to decide needs to decide whether to accept a project based on NPV, the company's discount rate is um, 6%. The relative cash flow details are as under You have your cash outflow or you can also say it as an investment for the project in year one itself for uh, let's say $501,000. Oops. You have the cash inflow over the over eight years as follow. We'll try to take a different approach. We'll not just say that the project is going to earn a constant cash flow. We'll say the cash flow amounts are going to change across some years. So for the year one to four, let's say the cash flow, uh, cash inflow will be $77,000 for year one to four. For year five to seven, we'll put it as $85,000. And lastly, in the year eight, the last year, you have, have a high increase in the cash flow. I will bring it to 1 lakh 1800 something. Yeah, just random figures right now. Okay, now we're going to compute the project's cash uh, net present value. So, the com so first of all, it's important to know what is the company's discount rate. The discount rate is 6%, which is the company's required rate of return. So, we're going to need a couple of columns over here. Let's say the period over here. We have the net cash flow. We're going to put the 6% uh, present value factor from the present value table. I'll just mention over here. Derived from present value table. If you remember, we had uh, seen the present value table uh, the previous session where we are understanding the concept of present value. That whole table. I'm going to attach a table to you guys for your reference. You can use that table to understand or you can say for easy computations. And finally, you get the discounted cash flow amount. Okay, discount cash flow at 6%. At 6%. Whew. So here you have 1, your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, your 2, your three, your four, 
year 5, year 6, year 7 and finally year 8. Net cash flows. In the initial year, the company is going to have a net cash flow of $501,000. That's a negative figure over here. We'll just set it to the numbers over here. Okay. This needs to be in the number format. In the next year, from year 1 to year 4, the company is going to have a... Okay. The first cash flow starts from year 2. Year 1, obviously, there's a cash outflow and it does not start earning from year 1. From next year onwards, it's going to have a net cash inflow of $77,000 up till year 4, $85,000 from year 5 to year 7 and lastly it's $1,1800.